Thanks everyone again for coming. Just want to say what an awesome cinema this is. Thanks very much to Barry and Pete for helping organising it. And I think, you know, I mean, just looking at it, it's the sort of place where you know it's going to be a good night and you'll happily come to this sort of location many a time, which I'm sure we can sort stuff out in the future. So that's brilliant. As we know, Christmas is just around the corner. So what better way to celebrate than by watching the true Christmas James Bond film? <laughs> On Her Majesty's Secret Service, absolutely amazing film. And here we have two brilliant people who I'm sure you recognise once we watch the film, Terry Mountain and Sylvana Henriques. <laughs> so I'm going to do a quick Q&A with Terry and Sylvana and then we're going to open it out for the audience. So if anyone can think of some questions for later on and then we'll go to that uh, in, in about 20 minutes or something. Okay, so just starting off, uh, Sylvana, we'll start with you if that's okay. Now, if you remember going back to when you first got the role, there must have been thousands of actresses trying to get into uh, Majesties. So, do you remember what your audition process was like and how and what you were doing when you found out you got the role? I was um, a photo model, and um, one day my agents called and sent me for an interview because it was quite a few ladies, of course. I went along, and I was very shy and timid, I not, don't believe <laughs> not knowing <laughs> <laughs> you believe it. Don't <laughs> nudge me like that. I usually get not a kick, but... Uh. Not, not knowing what I was in for, I arrived, and I sat there, and I looked, and saw all these gorgeous ladies arrive, and I said, oh, no, I have no chance in hell. I was the first to arrive, and I was the last to leave. And they said, Tom... He saw me and looked at me and said, oh, I'm so sorry. You have no photograph. And we don't know what you would look like in the photograph, so I'm sorry. Next time. And I put my little head down and disappeared. Now, I was um, at um, Pinewood Studio, and uh, uh, someone rushed to me and said, um, oh, um, we need you. You need me for what? Oh yes, here's a, a, a book and a fan, and we need you to do a Japanese fan dance. I said, really? <laughs> I'm not Japanese. <laughs> How am I going to do that? They took me into the uh, dressing room. They put this enormous wig on my head, totally naked, and said, dance. <laughs> I had this fan, he was doing this, and I was flopping about, and somehow for about half an hour, they said, well, thank you very much. That's fine, thank you, goodbye. A couple months later, I was called again to go for an interview for <laughs> a New Majesty Secret Service. So I walked in, he looked at me, said, okay, thank you for coming, and then I got the call, you're going to Switzerland. You've got the part. I said, oh, fantastic. Never been to Switzerland before. Are you going to be on top of a mountain? Are you going to be bedded up there for a couple of months? So I said, oh, my God, it's very cold. <laughs> but I did. What mountain are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> now, these people, OK? They don't, they don't know. They're Switzerland has folks, a lot you know of mountains. I mean? <laughs> They're not used Shulton. to big city people. Shulton. And um, but I didn't know what it was like until I got there. The cable car to take up to the top, and it was rather strange to get there. But I got there, and I thought, oh yes, rather exciting and all that. And and then we started to shoot the film, which is was lovely, exciting, and dangerous. Hmm. Yeah, but I enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, now, Terry, you obviously played Draco's henchman in the film, mm. Raphael. Yeah. Um, so how did you initially become involved with the film? Well, I'd been in the business about five, six years. And at that time, I had a very good agent. And she used to put me in for everything. And uh, I got a call one day and she said, Terry, the, uh, they're casting on Her Majesty's Secret Service, do James Bond film. I think you're ideal for one of the parts in that uh, film. I said, super. So she said, Terry, uh, would you go and see the casting director 11 o'clock next Friday? I said, yeah, sure. So like all actors, you don't work all the time. Mm -hmm. You work from 
job to job. And I was doing freelance chauffeuring at that time, driving other people's cars. And I had this client in Green Street, uh, Park Lane, and I went to pick one of his family up from Heathrow. The, uh, my audition was 11 o'clock on the Friday morning. I went to Heathrow, 8.30, the plane was an hour late. By the time they came through customs, another hour. So I phoned Gabby up and I said, Gabby, I won't be available for 11 o'clock. She said, well, get there as soon as possible, Terry, and I'll tell me you're gonna be late. She said, but don't make it after one o'clock. <laughs> so I picked the client up, took them to London, raced round to Eon Films in Park Lane. And it was a Phantom Three Rolls Royce, a beautiful <laughs> silver job, red upholstery. The, the air conditioning was absolutely fabulous. So I parked it right outside their door, went in. As, I'm coming, as I went in, the casting director was coming down the stairs, five to one. So he said, OK, Terry, he said, well, you're here. You better come and see me. So I went upstairs and he told me about the film. He said, we're, we're, we're seeing people. It's down to six people now, six character actors. One's been cast already, so you might be lucky. So the telephone went and he spoke to the person on the other end of the line. And he said, I'll be there at quarter past one. So he puts the phone down. He said, Terry, thanks very much indeed. He said, I know your work. I'll be in touch with Gabby and uh, leave it with me. So we went downstairs. He spoke to the receptionist. He said, I'll be back at three o'clock. And he called back at three o'clock. So I said, Mr. Lovell, I've got a car outside. Can I give you a lift anywhere? He said, would you? I opened the door. He took one look at the Rolls Royce, one look at the receptionist, one look at me, and said, yeah, fine. <laughs> so I opened the car door. He jumped in. He said, Terry, he said, would you take me to, the, to a florist in, in, in uh, Barclay Square? I said, yeah, sure. Drove down Curzon Street, Barclay Square. He jumped out, I said, I'll wait for you. He said, would you? I said, yeah, sure. So he came out with a bunch of red roses. I took him to where he wanted to go in Park Street, 54 Park Street. He said, Terry, that's terrific. He said, I'll be in touch. So a week later, I got a call from my agent. She said, Terry, they liked you. They'd like to see you at Pinewood Studios to see the director and see maybe Harry Zaltzman. I said, super. Went to Pinewood, saw Peter Hunt, saw Harry, saw George Leach. And a week later, they phoned me up and said, Terry, the part's yours. I think it was that bit of courtesy, <coughs> giving the guy a lift, which we've all done. I think that's, he remembered me, and that's how I got the part. See, it paid off, didn't it? Yeah, <laughs> and I met Silvana. <laughs> and we've been friends ever since. Ever since. Actually, actually fell in love with me, you see. <laughs> <laughs> but unfortunately, you know, she's got houses in Gambia, <laughs> houses in the country. I couldn't afford her. <laughs> <laughs> now, a lot of our viewers here, some of the eagle-eyed ones particularly, will see that in the opening pre-title sequence, your character, Raphael, he wears just the one glove, which I think is a really yeah, cool yeah, one. Yeah. Now, was that your decision? or the No, wardrobe no, no. I tell you what, people have asked me about that. And then w before we started off, I said to Peter, only one glove? He said, yeah, one glove is more menacing. Uh. I said, fine. <laughs> That's a good idea as well. I think it works, definitely. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about the beach fight? F because, I mean, for us, that's one of the best action scenes in the series. And like sure. the fight is just incredible. Sure. Obviously, you and George sure. on the sand in the water, which sure. I imagine is pretty cold as well. Yeah, How, what was exactly. that like? Uh, well, it was April. Mm. It was cold. But when you're 32 years of age, you can do anything. <laughs> yeah? And when you're getting paid nice money and you're on location and you're in a James Bond film, you don't get any better than that. Um, if I may say so, I was the lucky one getting the opportunity to do that with 007 George Laysmith. You couldn't get a better leading man to work with. Yes. His, his strength, his timing, mm -hmm. his character, I thought he was terrific. Definitely, definitely. Well, it shows on the screen. Yeah, without a doubt. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 
Now, Silvani, um, you mentioned earlier, obviously, you flew out with, uh, with the other Angels to Switzerland for several months. So this wasn't a, going back to the UK. You sort of stayed no, out no, there no. for a we long time. No, no, no. We had to stay. So we had to stay. If you'll forgive the pun, did the an you Angels form like a close bond together? Yes, and actually. It was like a finishing school. <laughs> 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 we, we, we do several things, knitting and, you know, some doing have other things and play games or whatever, but um, we gone, got on very well together. Right. We had to, really. I think <laughs> there was a story that Joanna Lumley was into crochet and yes. she told all the other girls and got everyone to start to knitting. To start and knitting, exactly. And oh, she was like, we used to call her like the captain. <laughs> the captain. <'cause> she was <laughs> the. <laughs> and do you remember what you ended up knitting? Was it a scarf or anything like that? Or I Yes, I think I, I knitted um, something looking like a scarf. But <laughs> 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 but not exactly. It's something to pass the time, you know. We finished with that and we're starting on something else. And um, some uh, some girls I said decided that we had to do a spiritual thing. So we had the, the, the board and the thing because we said all the people that had the accident on the young frau, <laughs> <laughs> we might get some of the spirit in. So we started to do that as well. We did so many different silly things, mm. but, but it was exciting and the most important thing that we, the girls, we all got on. That's great. Very so well. You yes, for that. very yeah, well. We're all nice yes. yeah. So I have a question for both of you actually. Yes. George Lazenby. Yes. Now, what was he like to work with, and how close was his interpretation of Bond to his real life personnel? I I I knew George slightly just before he became because he was Mr. Big Fryer Man, <laughs> and we did one job together with him standing with an enormous box, and that was it. Um, I find him very pleasant, and when I found that he got. The, the part as James Bond, and he came. Uh, he was a lovely person to work with, and I think he did an excellent job. Um, it's a shame that um, he just actually did one film. It's a shame he couldn't have gone and d do much more than he did. But he was absolutely fantastic. What about you, Terry? I know you don't like him, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I did work in, in one of his uh, commercials, Big Fry. Yes, yeah. here yeah. you are. <laughs> I was one of the guys, that one of the muscle men in the, uh, in the Casbah, mm. with Milton Reed that mm -hmm. worked in Bond, yeah. Tom Clegg, yeah. and Al Joint. And we were all four heavies. That was the first time I met George in 1967. Yeah. And then a year later, we uh, met in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. And I thought he was tremendous. I thought he was a great 007. Every scene I saw him play, I couldn't have done any better. And I'm only sorry he didn't carry on. Yes. It's a shame. I thought it's he was a terrific. Shame. Yeah. Yeah. And we're still mates now. We're still in contact now. Yeah. 50 That's years true. on. Yes. How, and how good is that? And when we, we, when we meet each other, it's like we were never parted, you know. <laughs> <laughs> He's always coming, cuddling. He said to me once, um, your boyfriend over there is staring at me. I said, which boyfriend? Yeah, which one? Yeah, yeah which, one? which one? Yeah, yeah. I said, um, George, that's my husband. He said, doesn't matter, he's still a boyfriend, he's still staring at me. <laughs> 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 Moving on to uh, Peter Hunt, the director. Oh. Now, w what was he like as a director and, and, and how did he work with the actors? Was he sort of an actor, star oh. director? Or? Peter, my experience with Peter Hunt, he was absolutely joy. He's marvelous. I had a great time with him. We became very close, and I loved him very much. He was a great friend. He comes across really well in interviews he with is, everyone as yes, well. Yes, always a wonderful person. With him. It's a shame that we missed him so, so soon. You know, mm. one of those unfortunate things, I suppose. Did you get on with uh, Peter? Yeah, Hunt, very, very, very much indeed. A, a, a fabulous director. Mm -hmm. He, uh, he was a gentleman, yes. a gentleman director of the old school, and he knew the film industry inside very out. Well. He Street. knew actors inside out. Mm. And if there was something that you wanted to put into it, he would say, "Okay, Terry, let's see it. Yeah. Let's see what. Let's see what you can give me. Let's see what I can cut into." Yeah, a gentleman. Mm -hmm. He really was yeah. fabulous uh, director. 
and I wish we'd done more. Yes, I wish well, done like more. George, you well, only yes. the one film. We might have got some more work out of it. Exactly. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> it was only um, two years ago, wasn't it, 2015, that you both returned to Peace Gloria for the yes. opening of the 007 Walk yes. of Fame. So yes. what was that like going back to location oh. after all those years? Oh, wonderful. Brings back wonderful memory. Had you been since the filming? Of I'd, I'd the been times a couple been? of yeah. times. Yeah. 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 yeah, the... Uh, I think it's heaven on earth. Oh no, it's even better heaven. Well, you proved well, it so much. If you get the opportunity of going there. You've got to go. You've got to go. Got it to might go be seats. expensive, but uh, if you go for a holiday there and you don't enjoy it, let me know and I'll send you the check. <laughs> <laughs> Some hopes. <laughs> yeah, fabulous part of the world. It really is. And they have improved it so much. When we were shooting the film, the, the um, cable car, it's so old, sometimes we're going up and the snow falls and got twisted. So we stand there rocking like this and think, oh my God, that's it. <laughs> Until another one came to and fold the wire that we can move. It, it, all that excitement, it was, it was, it was in the danger, it was wonderful. I wouldn't have wanted any better. <laughs> You know, in a couple of years' time, we're going to have a big reunion. Well, there. this is it, 50th yes. anniversary. Yes. So, George, oh. Sylvan and myself, John, John Glenn, and a few more of the Bond girls will be there. Yes. If you can <laughs> save up. Please be there. If please you can go. Be there. <laughs> yes. If you can go, please say hello when you're there. Yes. You, you, won't, uh, you won't be sorry. If you don't enjoy it, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> I can I can guarantee. But you will enjoy. I can guarantee. I've been back three times would. in fifty years. Do you know yeah. what month your the celebration well, is going to be? It's going to be October. It's going to be October before the ski season. I starts. was told possibly then might have it in March, might. Well, and I don't think it'd be a good the, idea. After the ski season. Or yeah. Mm. But sooner the better. Mm. So yeah. if you can make it, please say hello. You, you won't be sorry. I'll, uh, I'll take it back what I said about paying for it. Because <laughs> <laughs> you will enjoy it. Does uh, anyone have any questions for uh, Terry or Savannah? But Terry, you also worked on Where Eagles Dare. Yeah, you I know, did. Any, any, any thoughts, any stories about Where Eagles Dare? I did, I did, <laughs> I did. That was 1967, be before Clint Eastwood was an international star. Yeah, Ooh. I got. I was the radio officer in that. I got shot by Eastwood in the opening, by the opening scene, more or less. <laughs> and uh, the f the funny thing about that is that it was Liz Taylor's thirty sixth birthday. What were we doing that scene? I was in a uniform, Eastwood, and so was Richard Burton. So Liz Taylor came up to me. She said, "Terry," she said, uh, "It's my birthday today." and we're having some champagne and cake. You're in uniform, would mm -hmm. you mind having your photograph taken with us? And having some cake and champagne? Now, I'm 20 odd years of age. I've got an international <laughs> film star talking to me while I have some champagne and cake with her. So, Good day. that was the first time I'd met Liz Taylor and Burton and Eastwood. And then a couple of years later, I auditioned for Anne of a Thousand Days. And some, somebody down the line had said, I'd worked on Where Eagles Dare. So I think it was Dickie Burton that said, yeah, let's use him as the executioner <laughs> in Anne of a Thousand Days. And that's how the business works. You know, you're in one job, you see somebody else, and uh, it's a, a bit of good luck all the way through. So I did work in Where Eagles Dare, super film, yeah. And I'm pleased you brought it up. It's yeah. terrific. Great. Thanks very much. Yeah. Any other questions? To those who don't know, Honor Majesty's Secret Service is sometimes dismissed as, oh, that one was rubbish because he only did one. Why do you think, in all honesty, it's got such a poor reputation with so many people who don't know that it's one of the greatest films ever made? Ah, well, I would think that's an individual taste and I would think that uh, uh, people that seen our film 
and they know the directors and they know the cutting and they know all the actors. I think we'll put our hands up and say terrific. I think the score, the musical score for that film was oh, the best ever. I do like Goldfinger, but I think our film was terrific. I really I'm do. I was wondering really as to whether that, whether that was something that was in the air at the time, because I wasn't born when this film was made. Where do you come from? Where do you come from, from where? Where do you? Uh, about five miles down the road. Oh, do you? Ah. Yeah. Um, but I was going to crack a funny there, but I won't. No, <laughs> <laughs> no I, 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 <coughs> I was wondering if, if, the, if the critical reception at the time was, was could you just tell us about, about how it was received when it first came out? Well, I think a lot of people were Sean Connery, that they, they thought yes. he was terrific. And yes. they didn't like to see anybody take over Taken from him. Taken from Sean. Don't forget, Sean is being there and really set, you know, the James Bond. And why this young man had the chance is because Sean decided, said, that's enough. And that's why he had the chance for that. Uh, but they thought that Sean was going to return, which he didn't. It's a bit of a doomed position for yes, whoever took was, it, really. Yes, it was, it was, was. Yeah. Darren, did you have a question? We'll have a final question. Just a quick one, talking about Sean, about your experience coming back for Diamonds. Oh, so Diamonds are forever. Yeah, yeah super. <laughs> yeah. A couple of years later, I got a call from, uh, from the production, mm -hmm. from Bob Simmons, and he said, Terry, he said, uh, would you come to Pinewood and meet the director, uh, Guy Hamilton? He said, there could be a part in this film for you. Mm -hmm. I said, that's terrific. Peter Franks? He said, well, no, that's been cast already. <laughs> he said, it was one of the guards. I said, yeah, sure. So I went up to Pinewood the following week, saw Bob. He took me to see Guy Hamilton. Yeah. And uh, Bob said, Guy, he said, this is Terry Mountain. I think he's ideal for one of the guards. So uh, Guy said, uh, he said, yeah, sure. He said, he worked with Peter. He did very well with him. I think he'd be ideal. So the uh, guy said, well, if you're happy with him, so am I. So we're on the set with my, my good friend, George Cooper. And he called us both over, guided. He said um, to George, he said, say this for me. Hold it. Get your hands up. So <laughs> George said, hold it, get your hands up. He said, Terry, you said the same thing. So me with my big, with my big mouth. <laughs> I said, hold it, get your hands up. And the whole of the set stopped. You could have dropped a pin in and heard it. <laughs> you see, you got the part. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Brilliant. And people are saying, hold it, get your hands up. 40 odd years now, 50 odd years now. But good fun. I was so lucky to get that part because when we did that at Pinewood, they all went to, to America. And can I just say a few things, yeah. that opening scene? The guy with the gun in the mud bath, Bill Maverick uh, Morgan, he was the guy with me on the beach. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. And if you, when you see the film again, his timing and his breathing, there was no bubbles when he came up from the, to shoot Connery. There was no bubbles when they pushed him over. Fabulous bit of, of acting, fabulous. And the guy that was pushed into uh, the mud bath, that was Chris Webb, a very good, very good friend of mine, stuntman. And that was a week's work, yeah, 25 quid a day. One thing about yeah. that scene, the guy whose face gets washed, if that ever happened to you, you would, you would twitch. Did ah. you have to do a lot of takes? Because I, I just think well, being covered in mud and then having. <laughs> but but that's what I'm saying. Bill's timing in that, and his acting experience. I thought he was tremendous. Did you have to do a lot of takes? Though? Well, I I didn't do it. It was Bill. Yeah. Bill Morgan. Yeah, but but you you must be on set. Well, I was I was on set, but I think they they rehearsed it quite a bit before they got to shoot. But I thought he was tremendous, coming out of the mud. No bubbles from his from his nose and the timing, I mean, going. I thought he was tremendous, but a very good stuntman. Now, if you want to see Bill in action, we did uh, we did a Champions, and Bill played the lead in it. He was the lead act in leading actor, 
and it's called the experiment. If you can look it up, the experiment on the on the uh, on the champions, and I played the uh, one of the cigar smoking uh, guards in it. So when you have a look at it, 1966, and we're still getting repeats now. Yeah. But Bill played the lead in that, a tremendous actor. But he died a few years ago. Died very young, type very young. Yeah, Bill Morgan, Bill Maverick Norman, super actor, Francis super Austin guy. Ryan, another Connery film, uh, the, the Hill. The Hill, yeah. It's one of my favourites. Oh, really? Really? Yeah, nice. How did you get, in, become, get involved with that? What are your memories of, of working on that? Ah, well, how long have we got? Yeah, that would probably be yeah. the last question. <laughs> 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 I'd always wanted to get in the film industry as yeah. a stuntman. I'd always wanted to get in the business. And then uh, I got in, came out to London, got in the business, and my first film as an extra was The Hill, <coughs> December 1964. Right. And I had nice short hair, 20-odd years of age, looking like an old squatty or, a, or a, an old uh, crook. Okay, <laughs> and they put me behind Connery in the prison, uh, prison that seems. Yeah. And uh, well, that was it. There was n there was no talking to anybody. I was new in the business, and that was my first film film part, The Hill, yeah. 1964. Yeah. 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 Super. So when you see the film, mm -hmm. you see my big head and my big face next to Connery. <laughs> I, I'm the guy with more hair than Connery. So <laughs> <laughs> My pleasure. I think that's about all Thanks for the bringing time we have for questions. For um, so yeah, we're going to roll the film uh, shortly, if that's all right, yeah. Barry. Yeah. And uh, big again, another big hand, please. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks very much.